Today I'm going to show you how to install the new SD Next for Stable Diffusion. I'm going to show you how to install it on Windows for NVIDIA GPUs. If you have an AMD, it works on Linux. You can also use Mac M1s and M2s. Cat in a hat? Let's see what we can do. Oh, and it has a beautiful new user interface. Let's look at that. Oh, and what's the difference between one yard and two yards? Usually, the fence. So for this to work, we're going to install three things. First, we're going to install Git, then we're going to install Python, and then we're going to install SD Next. I'm going to show you every step of the way. All the links are going to be in the description below. Here you have Git. We're going to go and install the 64-bit Git for Windows. Download that. Then we're going to go to the Python link. And it's important that you get Python 3.10. I'm using 3.10.6 because it's been, you know, I've been using it for a long time and it works for me. You can use 3.10.9, it doesn't really matter, but I'm using 3.10.6. And you're going to find the Windows installer, this one here, 64-bit. Just download them and then just double click on your files. We're starting with the Git one. We're just going to press next all the way and we're not changing anything for Git here. We're just uh, using all the default settings because we're not going to be using it for any uh, fancy development stuff. We just needed to uh, copy the files from GitHub, which we'll be needing to install SD next. Okay, so Git is finished. We're now going to open the Python file. And now it's very important, as you can see here, uh, there's a little checkbox down here, add Python 3.10 to path, and you need to click this. This is very important. And then we can just press install now. Now this is finished. Now you can just open a file browser window and go to the location where you want your SDNX installed and press up here and then type CMD. That's going to open your command terminal. Now you're going to go to the GitHub page that you can find in the description below. And we're going to find install. We're clicking on that. And here there's a step-by-step -step install guide. Either you can follow this and you can see here you can git clone the repository or we can go to the top here with code here and just copy URL to clipboard. So it's basically the same thing. And then we're going to type git clone, paste that. If you want your folder to be named something special, you can say, for example, after this SD next, and then that will copy into that directory. If not, it will use a default name, which I think right now is automatic. Now all the files are being copied to your machine. So the easiest way to do it now is just go into that directory, go back in here, find SD next, open that. I'm going to scroll down and find the web UI dot bat file and we're just going to double click that now the guide recommends that we are starting this from the terminal with a debug command but we just want to do a simple install here so we're just double clicking the web ui dot bat file and now we're going to let this run it's going to take a minute or two well more like uh, five to ten uh, or more depending on your computer so just let it run and uh, i'll catch up you with you in a bit once this has finished so it is now finished. And how do you know that? Well, you can see that we have a local URL here and it says startup time and stuff like that. We got a couple of warnings. We got a warning, cannot gener generate without a checkpoint, completely normal. We got another couple of warnings, package version mismatch. Got a few of those. Not a huge deal. You can get SDNX running anyway. So we're just gonna leave that for now. So don't worry about it. What you're going to do now is take this uh, local URL. We're going to copy that or you can just uh, control click and you're going to get that into your uh, browser. Now, this is the basic user interface for SD Next, and we can't really do anything now because uh, we don't have a model. So if we do cat in a hat here, for example, and try to generate, it just gives us an error model not loaded. So you have two options. Either you can download a model. You have options here, easily download from the right. So if we, for example, just want to download one of these models, Juggernaut SD Reborn here, for example, which is in a 1.5 model, if we click on that, it's actually going to start downloading that. And you can see we have a little processing up here. We can also see in the terminal that uh, there's a download in progress. Now, if you already have models, you can go into your settings and those can be found in the system tabs here. And then we have system paths. And here you can change the path to your model folders. So for example, my model folder for Stable Diffusion uh, would be 
this one here. So for example, let's press up here, copy paste this or copy this and then paste that into here, for example. Uh, now that, that would be just my models. You can do the same for LoRa's or control nets or whatever. But if we apply that and press the refresh up here, you can now see that all my models have been loaded. And if we go back now and prompt for cat in a hat, we are getting, well, a cat in a hat. And we have now managed to uh, successfully install SD Next. So what can you do with the way you can generate Im images from uh, the text, text to image tab here? So we have a positive prompt and a negative prompt. You have the size here, the width and height. You have how many images you want. You can do it either by in the batch count or the batch size. I usually do multiple Im images in a batch count, uh, which uh, it's a little slower, but it will be easier on your GPU. If you use a higher batch size, you're going to get more images in a group, with making your GPU work faster. Uh, but it also might crash your uh, computer if you set it too high because of out of memory issues. Well, not crash your computer, but it will crash your SD next. And the CFG scale here is uh, mostly dependent on your model. It's set somewhere between one and seven, I would say most of the time. Let's say three and seven for SDXL and, and 1.5 and one and two for Turbo, Lightning, Hyper, whatever, the, you know, the, the fast new models. Steps usually between 20, 25, 30. I prefer using the sampler DPM plus plus 2M with the Keras option. That's because uh, DPM plus plus 2M Keras is a convergent sampler. So I'm not gonna give you the full details, just uh, what I think about it. Uh, high diffusion is SDNX version of uh, high res fix. So for example, if you're using a larger resolution, say we do 1024 by 1024, Oh, I'm also generating by press, pressing control enter. Uh, you can also press up here to generate. Um, but high diffusion is a way to keep consistency in the image when you're going higher in the resolution. So similar to high res fix, but not exactly the same thing. In the image to image tab, you can load an image. Say for example, we take this robot here and we prompt for another robot. Let's bio mech frog robot. And we generate this. It's going to use uh, this one left here as an as an input as you can see it closely resembles what we had it's given some sort of a frog details now you can adapt this so you have some uh, corrections values here for example we have the denoise so denoise is the biggest thing so the denoising strength is how much it's going to retain from this image here so we set this to one for example uh, or 0 0.99 in this case we're not going to re retain almost anything from this one it's going to create a new image so if you set this close to zero, we're going to retain everything. So there's no change. So the higher you set this slider, the more change you're going to implement into your image. I recommend somewhere up around 0 0.4, 0 0.6, if you want to retain the color values that are in here. You can also send this to InPaint, for example, where you can repaint the areas here. So we want a new eyes, robot eyes. And if we generate this now, it's just gonna generate the eyes part here. So you can see our image retains the rest of the robot and the background here that our eyes have changed. Now let's take a quick look at the new user interface. We'll go into the system. We're gonna find user interface and options. And down here you have theme type and here you have modern. So we, if we set this to modern, apply settings, and then I'm just gonna restart the server here. If you wanna see the progress, you can again open your terminal and you can see that uh, the server is uh, restarting. And once that's finished, it's gonna load back up in your browser. And now you can see the modern or new user interface for SD Next. Now, this is a little different and in my opinion, it's, it's fairly good, but it takes some getting used to there's icons for everything here on the left. The good part is once you hover over these, you can actually uh, read what's uh, going on. So here it says base, text encoder. So here we have some samplers, you have the seed, stuff like that. So you have everything here. It's just uh, in a different place. And you also have a lot of color options for the user interface. So here we can go back in, we can set the user interface. And now we have the default theme. And there are a lot of modern themes to choose from here. Let's check um, the Tron one here, for example. We can apply this and now it's gonna change much, much faster now that we're actually inside the modern theme type. 
So this was a quick guide on how to get you started with STNext for Stable Diffusion. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.